Welcome back to EMT Made Easy, episode one. All right, so we left off uh, by finishing off the, pre the prefixes and the root words. So now we're going to go over some suffixes, not all of them, just a few of them, to help you out. That's wrong. All right, so let's go over every single one, one by one. So the suffix, remember, is the last part of a word. So you have your prefix, the first part of the word, the root word itself, what the actual meaning is, or what the actual meaning is, and then you have the suffix, which is the end of the word, which kind of wraps it all together. So algia, that's supposed to be A-L-G-I-A, -A, um, this just means pain, algia, pain. Emesis means vomit. Itis means inflammation. Ology is just the study of. And then IST -ist means like a specialist. Somebody that specializes. Someone that specializes. So that's what these means. All right, so now let's put some words in front of these suffixes, some root words to actually make it mean something. So I could actually put it in perspective so you could get a better idea of what it means. So let's go um, with emesis first. So I'm pretty sure I haven't gone over this, but every time we see H-E-M with the A or with the O means blood. So H-E-M, hem, hemo, hema, Blood, okay? So let's go ahead and put hema temesis means you're throwing up blood, right? So hemo, hema, hemotemesis, or hemotemesis. I'm not sure if I'm spelling this exactly correctly, but it's okay. I'm not in school right now and I'm kind of tired. But hemotemesis, it means blood, all right? So hemo. It's blood, or hema, and then emesis means you're throwing up blood. All right, so now itis. Let's go ahead and just pick a, an organ. How about pancreas? All right, pancreas. So pancreas pancreatitis. So what do you think that means? If itis is inflammation, it's an inflammation of the pancreas. The pancreas is inflamed. It's, it's swollen. So inflammation means swollen too, it could, it could mean that. Um, as far as ology, the study of, so let's go ahead and, I don't know, breakfast ology, the study of breakfast, and so forth and so on. Uh, geology, geology, I think that's how you spell it. I'm not sure, I'm not an English teacher. And it's my second language. I should know though. But geology. So the study of, right? And then est dentist. Think of a dentist. They specialize in teeth. So on and so forth. Alright? So these are your suffixes. So now let's actually put some words together and put meaning to everything that I was talking about in my last video and in this video. All right, so you are going to see some suffixes, maybe some root words, and maybe some prefixes that I haven't gone over, but I'm going to tell you what they mean when I write it up here. So don't worry. Don't panic. All right, so let's go with pneumo. What does pneumo mean? Remember, I said pneumo pertains to air in the lungs. So pneumothorax means air built up in the lungs. So thorax, what thorax means, every time you see thorax, Things chest. So pneumothorax is air in the chest. Alright? So pneumothorax. Pneumo is air pertaining to lungs. Thorax means chest. Air in the chest, but not just air in the chest, it's air in the chest where you don't want it. So every time you hear pneumothorax, it's air in the chest, but it's where you don't want it. It's where it's not supposed to be. As far as what it actually means and stuff like that, you'll get into it later. I'm going to cover it in some chapters down the road or lectures. 
All right, so let's go over something that I already went over. So how about peri? Means around, right? Peri, cardio is your root word. Uh, okay, that would be your, your suffix. But pericardi, peri prefix, cardi is your actual root word, the actual meaning, sac. That would be a sac around the heart. It's a pericardial sac. It's a, it's a sac that encapsulates the actual heart, right? That's one thing right there. I'm hoping that I'm making this stuff easy for you guys. Alright, so those were, those were just some words as far as, um, let's just keep on going through vocabulary. Just whatever I can think of on the top of my head. It's not much of them. It's the weekend. Alright, so cardiac equals a heart, alright? Pulmonary, pulm, o means the lungs, okay? What else? Bronco also means lungs. So let's actually go into what some of these things are. Cardiac is a muscle. It's the only muscle of, of its kind in the entire heart. Okay, so heart. Pulmonary, it means lungs. Bronco, it's not just the lungs themselves, but they're tiny little tubes in your actual lung that get the air to where they need to go. Like I said, this video, um, well, I find it very boring terminology, so I'm just trying to think of what I should talk about, because I have no idea of what to really talk about. So I'm just going to kind of jab around for the next few minutes. Hopefully you take some education out of it. So these are your lungs right here, right? So we'll pretend that these right here are your lungs. Well, inside your lungs, you have these little things called bronchioles, which are little tubes inside the lungs themselves, little pathways for the air to kind of flow down into and then get to where they need to go. Alveoli. So what is alveoli? Alveoli are these little tiny sacs inside your, your actual lungs, and that's where gas exchange occurs. So after the air goes all the way down through your mouth, this is called your trachea. We'll go over that some other time. Uh, your bronchi and then your bronchioles, finally down to your alveoli, that's where gas exchange actually occurs. That's where all the action happens. That's what I say. Um, so that's alveoli. They're, they're tiny little air sacs, and that's how oxygen gets to your tissues via your circulation. So since I, since I was talking about circulation, let's talk about what that is. As far as circulation goes in your actual body, we're talking about your heart and then your blood vessels, so that represents the blood vessels, veins, arteries, whatever it needs to be. That's it. So, and the actual blood itself, right? So your circulation is just the blood itself, the vessels in which the blood is carried in, and then the thing that pumps the blood to where it needs to go. And that's the circulation system pretty much in a nutshell in the simplest form that I could put it. Um, in, a circulation, in a circulation lecture, I'm going to go over the veins, the arteries, why they're different, how the heart actually works, all that stuff. But for now, this is going to be one of the first lectures that I'm doing right here. So I'm making it super simple, just so you can get the gist of it and kind of figure it out from there. So that's enough. For of that. Let's talk about how about uh, reference referring to the body. So like where things are in the body, how to describe where some things are. Let's talk about that. Do I have time? I have five minutes. I'll try to make it fast.
So this right here is you, right? You're happy. You're super happy right now because you're watching my show. So you're like, hey, yay, I'm watching John, and I got my tongue out because I'm awesome like that. All right, so there's a, a word called proximal. So I'm going to put it over here, proximal. Proximal means close to the trunk. What does trunk mean, John? Let me tell you what trunk means. Trunk means just this, the core, the inside, close to you, close to the inside of you, close to your spine. I'm just getting crazy, but that's what it means, close to. So, if you have a cut that's proximal, I have a cut proximal on my, it's proximal on my lid, on my, um, my arm, proximal to the armpit, that means it's close to the armpit. So if it's proximal to the armpit, then it would be distal. Distal means far away from the trunk. It means it would be distal to the what? The hand, right? So in reference to far away distal and proximal close to the trunk, I have a, a cut that's proximal to, so it's in direction of. So it's proximal to the armpit. Now, let's put it in a better perspective so you can really, mean what, so you can really get what I mean by this, by proximal and distal. So this right here is your elbow, right? Your elbow is right there. If the cut was right here, the cut would be proximal to your elbow and distal to your fingers. So it's always pro it's proximal to whatever's closest to your trunk that you can describe. All right? So that's what I mean. But distal will always be the farthest point away from your trunk. Proximal will be the, the closest landmark to your trunk. I hope you guys get that. Another example. If I get a cut on my on my thigh. So this is your foot right here. This is your this is your 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 knee and this is your thigh. So let's say your cut was on your actual leg. The bottom part here by the way is called the leg, the thigh. Leg, thigh. In the medical field the whole thing is not a leg. It's the bottom part from the actual knee down to the foot. That's the actual leg. The top part is the thigh. So if you got a cut on your leg down here the cut would be proximal in relation to the trunk, proximal to your kneecap, and distal to your foot. You guys feel what I'm saying now? So proximal is always going to be like to the inside. What's closest is the closest in that landmark. So you're going to re reference it to that. And then distal would be just the farthest point away. Uh, that's as far as that goes. All right, so let's keep on going with this. Uh, anterior, every time you think anterior, Anterior is going to be the front of the body, the front. So where the face is at means anterior. So if you have a, a burn that's anywhere that's in the front of your face or like your stomach, front of your legs, in the front, that's anterior. So he has a cut anterior. He has an anterior, an anterior cut. I'm trying to figure this out. He has, uh, let's see. Let's say I have a gunshot wound, right? So I have a gunshot wound. This is the front of my body. Have an have a gunshot wound on the anterior portion of my arm, proximal to my shoulder and distal to my elbow. You guys get that? Okay, awesome. As far as so we know that anterior means just the front of the body. The entire front of the body is anterior. Posterior is the back. So they just post in the back of something. Posterior is the back of the body, and that means the back. Uh, then you have your midline, would be just the midline, the middle of your body. As far as superior and inferior, we already talked about that kind of. Superior means above, inferior means below. So superior would be towards the head. So if it's going towards the head, that's superior. If it's going towards the feet, it's inferior, it's below. Think infernal, like I said before, right? All right, and that's it. I'm out of time.